Hey guys, what's up? I am GojiFan1998 and welcome back for another new video for today. Today I am going to continue on for the next episode of GojiFan98's Godzilla-thon. Today, I am going to take a look at the 13 entrance in the Godzilla franchise with Godzilla vs. Megalon, which is my all-time favorite film from the Showa series and I always love it so much. Alright, so, Godzilla vs. Megalon has an interesting story to talk about. It all started right after Godzilla vs. Gaigan and marked the final time for Haru Nekajima's final acting for a suit acting career before he made one last cameo in 1973's Submersion Japan. So anyway, Shinichi Satigawa wrote a different draft of the script for having a new monster for Godzilla to battle with, but he decided to bring back one of the scrap kaiju who were originally going to be as in the 12th Godzilla movie, Megalon, rather than be as a giant mole cricket this time. He is have a brand new design this time, rather than the mole cricket idea. Meanwhile, Toho and Super Eye Production collaboration by do having a kids contest for whoever will win for uh, submit their own robot superhero concept art. The one of them was winner by created a concept known as Red Alone. But later this concept will later be used to, to rename to become Jet Jaguar. Both the Jet Jaguar and Megalon's concept arts was remain mystery. As Akihiko Iguji was, was on the cri offer credit in the movie, but he denied any involvement with this movie, Godzilla's Megalon. While, while Shinichi Satsugawa only wrote the different draft of the story of the script, Jim Fukuda also wrote the script for the movie. The only thing that's very interesting about me, it's because of Jet Jaguar was my favorite robot hero of all time. I love him so much when I was a kid because he was amazing. Jet Jaguar was actually a cross between Ultraman and Spatraman. There was also supposed that there was a rumor said that Jet Jaguar was meant to go and start his own movie, but that was just part of the rumor of myth. So it was actually going to be as a new Godzilla movie. But according to Senior Messenger's Monster Madness said the movie Godzilla vs Megalon took film in about three weeks. But once again, like Godzilla vs Gigan, they using a stodge footage once again. Depending on the budget you have, whatever budget you have to pay for direct the movie, then you have no choice by using the stodge footage from the other previous Godzilla films. That was a waste of money for that. And they also brought back Gigan, and he's got a brand new suit, but it has a similar design for the last one, but it's a different color. Gigan was returned by the same guy who portrays him, Kaprasho Sasuma, who returned to, repra to replace his role as Gigan. Godzilla had a brand new design this time. This time it was called Megaro Goji Suit. was one of my personal favorite alum fans. I love that design of him. I like his eye and his smiling face the way you look at him. It was the final suit to ever create for a Showa series until it makes two more appearances in the movie. But it also made appearance in five episode appears on Zone Fighter in 1973 TV series. Yeah, after Godzilla vs. Megalon, Toho immediately working on another series to follow working on the TV series that's connected to Godzilla franchise, Zone Fighter, known as the Human Meter Zone. But after 26 episodes, the show was cancelled due to rating, but some of the reports thinking it was due to an oil crisis. So, Megalon, his head was based off a Japanese rhinoceros beetle, according to Terry Yoshi Nakano, it was, it was very popular to the children at the time. And, I will never forget it. I have a favorite part of mine about this movie. It's where Godzilla does a legendary drop kick move. He does a tail slide move. Yeah, after you've seen this, that shot once, you can see it the same shot again one more time. How does Godzilla do that? I don't know. Even there's one weird part when Godzilla's trying to save Jack Jaguar to get him out of the ground. Megalon keeps spitting a spit bomb into the ground. They're using the same shot over and over. Kind of like you have to, like, uh, where you go A and B, it repeats over and over. And the music was handled by Rachiro Matabe, who returned to the composed the Godzilla franchise since Godzilla's Hedora. Also, the return of Hiroki Kawase, um, <clears throat> Hir Hiroki Kawase returns in this entrance as well. And he's portrayed as a younger brother of our main character, Goro Bucky, this is his younger brother. It was nice to have uh, Kawase be back in the series. It, it was really nice to have him back. 
But this is his final appearance in the Godzilla franchise, but we'll never know if he decided to come back. Well, after all these years, he grows up later. Some some child actor has to grow. Like everybody do, including me. I always grow up too. After Jack Jaguar appears in this one, he was never being seen again. But one day we will see Jack Jaguar again, but only Metro will tell. And I can't wait to see if Jack Jaguar or any monsters who hadn't been seen will come back, but we'll never know. So yeah, I like Richard Omarabe's score. It was really good, including it had a Jack Jaguar theme was pretty impressive. The suit actor who portrays Megalon by Dante, he had a hard time to hear him through the suit, but his assistant director had to blow the whistle to notify him when he when he has, he has to jump. And also, according to that, Megalon's suit was very heavy constructed at the time by Togo. So, yeah. Well, that's all I have to say for Godzilla vs. Megalon. Stay tuned to next episode. I'll review the 14 entrance in the Showa Godzilla series and the franchise. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 1974. Stay tuned. Bye.